Welcome back to another episode of NFL News on the Boomer Buzz channel. I'm your host, Terry, and thank you if you're subscribed. If you're not, consider clicking that button. Subscribe. Get down with the channel. Um, whether you're subscribed or not, click the thumbs up. All that stuff helps grow the channel, and I thank you for it. Deshaun Watson is stupid, and so are the Cleveland Browns. So I said on my uh on the channel that I wasn't going to really I wasn't going to speak an episode about the Deshaun Watson stuff until they made a decision because it was just it's a lot of back and forth. So today we get the decision. Uh the NFL and the NFLPA have settled for 11 games, 5 million dollar uh, sus- uh 11 game suspension, 5 million dollar fine. Within that suspension Deshaun Watson has to complete some conditions uh, in order to return for the 12th game. Uh, During that time, August 30th, his suspension starts, and he he can't be with any of the Cleveland Brown activities. Um, I believe he gets to come back in October to the facility. And then November, he can start practicing, something like that. So that that's kind of the layout. And, and that makes sense as, I mean, it's one thing to punish. And it's another to say, okay, we expect you to come back and be a professional athlete at the highest level and not get your body in tuned and right. So I, I get that. They're, they're a gradual rollout for him. To come now, really, I mean, in my mind, I mean, it makes sense. That's fine. I'm not going to nitpick that. So let's start with the NFL. I, I think it's a huge topic, and it's still the easiest way. is is the easiest one to tackle. The NFL dropped the ball. I saw a comment um, <laughs> on YouTube. Somebody said the NFL had the easiest layup, a wide open layup, and instead of <laughs> hitting the layup. They completely missed the rim and then need a grandma in the mouth on their way down. And that's funny to me, but I somewhat accurate. Like, how did you do this? Because unless you're going to come out and tell us something we don't know, we all have heard over and over from everybody that the way the system is set up, Goodell's office makes the final decision. So whether he does it himself or he appoints somebody, which he did. So then I have to ask the question, why did you settle? Why did you even look for a settlement if you are the one with the punishment? So if you going to stand here and say, and I haven't heard this, people keep saying Goodell said this. I didn't I haven't seen it, but maybe he did. But we can't keep hearing the reports, not, not even the reports, it, it, it's a fact, because Sue Robinson said it. The NFL requested indefinite suspension minimum to 2022 season. And so if the NFL is taking that stance from all reports and all facts, then you have a chance to render your own judgment. Why did you go to settle with him? And then you settle for one game more than your original settlement offer. Excuse me. So Sue L. Robinson is independent, third party. I get that. You might want to settle because you don't know what she's going to do. But once the ball comes to your court and you have the power to do it, why would you settle? And so... They look completely phony. I I really don't care. And and not that I care what the owners and Goodell said before. I've said it before. I I don't think they're doing this out of the pureness of their heart. But if you wanted to put a stamp on this situation, if you wanted to put a stamp on your words about being a predator, egregious behavior, not tolerating assault of women, everything you said, you had the, the, the opportunity. So, again, unless we hear something different, I do not see what leverage the NFLPA had. If they came out and said two years indefinite suspension, it just would have been that. The only maybe leverage you could argue 
is then they would sue and go to court. But guess what? The NFLPA hasn't beat the NFL in court. The, in the, the court systems have said over and over, this is in your CBA. You agreed to this. So why are we in courts? They have never beat the NFL. So why are you scared to go to court? So the only answer is you did not want to drag this situation out longer than it has to be and get back to football. And if that's the case, you lied about everything you said. So the NFL looks horrible. I, I would say bad because some other people look worse. The NFL looks bad. And again, not that I have much faith in them, but I just, how do you fumble this? You, you, you had every opportunity to make the Browns and Deshaun the scapegoats, and you threw yourself in the mix. So I just, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little speechless just at how dumb the NFL was. Okay, now that's that, that's done. The Cleveland Browns and Deshaun Watson. So I've said for, I've said my feelings on Deshaun stuff a lot. And maybe we got first time people, but I'm going to summarize it real quick because obviously as this happened, more debates online. And I actually, I was shocked. I'm not going to lie. I, from what I've seen, it was 75% against the NFL Browns and Watson. A um, lot of jokes, but a lot of people are like, no, this is seriously messed up. So I'm, I'm kind of shocked because the I would say 60% of the stuff I've seen prior to this was always defending Watson. So I, I don't know. Maybe people have come out now. But either way, there's still people defending Watson. And it's the same stuff. Like people keep saying the same things that don't they don't equal up to what your claim is. So it does not matter about the grand jury. It doesn't. I, I really don't understand this. And I don't know if I used this example before, but I'll use it now. There are people that I know personally and people we've heard of, you know, in workplaces, the office, places of work that have gone through um, a process with HR for sexual harassment and assault. And guess what? They didn't even lose their jobs, let alone went to jail. So to sit here and act like the end all be all is a criminal charge is is ridiculous. And again, I said this with Sue L. Robinson. This isn't a debate if that's right, if nonviolent and violent sexual assault are two different things. But that's the way the system is set up. So if you're not if you're not battering somebody you're not raping them then yes this isn't new people i wouldn't say get away with assault but they don't have criminal charges for harassment and assault it happens and so civil court is your discourse for that i i when did this become new now i get we have a large population of ignorant people and that's not a disparaging thing it's the truth a large population of our society is ignorant by design and don't know half the, the systems of our society. But this isn't new. Just because you didn't get charged criminally does not mean you didn't do anything. So that there's that part and that people keep arguing that. So again, as I've said to anybody that argues with me, and I'm going to say the same thing to you if you get in the comments arguing with me. Look at the facts and you tell me what you think happened. So you say, oh, these women came out of nowhere. They just wanted money, allegations. What was he doing with 66 different women in less than two years? Why did he set up appointments with people who don't even do massages? Why did he on record say that the massages weren't about rehabilitation or any type of physical therapy why did he admit to having sex after massages with women so you you tell me what you think is happening you you tell me tell me why we have countless evidence of him messaging people on instagram trying to set up massages 
You tell me. Why did the Cleveland Browns and we going we going matter of fact this is the segue to the Browns. Why did the Cleveland Browns put in his contract that all massages would have to be team approved? So somebody please tell me what I'm missing. If this man is innocent, tell me what I'm missing. Tell me what you think was happening. All right. So from we're going to move on from that. The Cleveland Browns completely are idiots and by the Browns I mean the leadership the owners and all that I'm not going to disparage the players the city I'm not going to do all that because it all comes from the owner the shine in the Browns is dumb they announced this everybody's been waiting everybody has opinions on the suspension everybody was going to talk themselves to death over the 11 games oh crap he's coming back against the Texans they're going to talk about that why would you put yourself in the situation that you did as the Browns and Watson by speaking to the media? I almost fell off my seat. I actually went to lunch right around the time it happened. So I just happened to see on ESPN that the owner and the GM were talking. I'm like, why? Why would you go up there? You know they're going to I mean, it'd be one thing. It's like, no questions. We just got a statement. We're going to move on. No, you could have released your little tweet your little Instagram post and just not said nothing for a few months. They decided to go in front of cameras and let people ask them questions and they got grilled. And si almost simultaneously, you have Deshaun Watson doing press, contradicting everything the Browns are saying. So once again, you tell me what you think is happening. The Browns are over here they asked Jimmy Haslam, the owner, who now I know his name, and I will remember it. They asked him, um, Joshua Robinson said he had a clear lack of remorse for what he did. And you said he's been remorseful. Can you explain why you think he's remorseful? And he said, because we're with him every day. We see him every day. He said he's remorseful. He said he's sorry, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Deshaun Watson is over there in front of camera saying, I'm innocent. I didn't do anything wrong. And I'm going to tell my side of the story. What? They asked Jimmy Haslam, why did he not say that he was remorseful before then? He only just said it in, uh, before the preseason game. Well, there's legal situations, blah, blah, blah. So, which, you know, it's true to a point. But still. And then Jimmy Haslam said a lot of crazy stuff. But to really, like, cap it, the man said, I believe in this country we should get second chances. One moment, don't define a person and all that. Okay, cool. And, yes, he's a star quarterback. That's part of it. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. And then he said, which I agree with. He said, if it was Joe Smith on the street, we wouldn't give him this chance, but he also wouldn't have it in the headlines like it is. True, true. But that is the whole, that is the worst thing you could have said. That is the worst thing you could have said. Why would you say that? We care about this issue. We care about the situation. We care about women. But he's a star quarterback, so we want to see if he can turn it around. What? That's the message you send in today? I mean, it's bad if you say it any day, but this is the worst time to say it. And I feel, let me say, shout out to Andrew Barry. I'm not, I, you know what? I mean, I don't know him, so, but I'm not going to drag him. I'm going to elevate him because this is tough. This is tough. This man is going to be on the grill. He was on the grill today. And he said what you have to say for the owners like even if he don't believe it he has to say that stuff so he's over there defending it just as much saying that if i had to do it all over again we would do it again knowing what we know today what what and, and just yeah so andrew barry was out there trying to give some good answers but i feel bad for dog I mean, he might he might roll with Deshaun. I don't know. If I find that out, I feel different. But as of now, I mean, what can he do? 
the owner sitting there saying one thing, you got to co-sign it. And so I feel bad for him because, you know, I don't know. I don't know where he stands on Deshaun for real, for real. But that's tough because they like they ask some good questions. They ask some good questions. You saying this, then why did you do this? And they had no answers. And then they bring out, uh, I don't know if that was Jimmy Haslam's wife or what it was, but everybody's saying, like, you never see her. They just brought her out because she's a woman, kind of like the Texans did. And she's over here talking about donating money to local programs to prevent sexual assault. Why are you doing that? If this man is innocent, why are you doing that? And if he's guilty, why are you backing him? So again, all this is going on while Deshaun Watson is probably on the other side of the field telling everybody, I didn't do anything wrong. He said, I don't apologize. Well, he didn't say this, but his camp said he's not apologizing to those women. And so it, it, it's kind of crazy, bro. It, it, he said he ain't apologizing to those women. He clarified that his apology was in general to anyone that was triggered by the situation, but he didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't do it. So, look, I mean, I already, like I said, I said how I feel about Deshaun Watson. And so, yeah, I mean, I think the situation needed to be handled the right way, and it hasn't been. And then on top of that, I feel like there was space and opportunity for redemption and all that. But, I mean, and, and I guess there still is. But right now, to me, it was just like Deshaun did this. It needs to be rectified. What goes on after this is up to him. Now, at this point, I'm like, bump this dude. Bump him. And the Browns. I as long as, I said this before, but as long as that ownership is there, as long as that ownership is there, I'm not messing with the Browns. And bump Deshaun Watson. Point blank, period. It's one thing to do this and go through this. It's another to sit here and lie and just be egotistical enough to sit here and say you didn't do anything wrong outside of the stuff you admitted to in the, in, like the facts we got it's just crazy to me so um yeah i'm gonna leave it there go ahead to the comment section let me know what you think share around get the conversation started thumbs up subscribe and thank you for listening